Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Global Public Seminar in Comparative and International Education. Today's seminar is part of a special series of seminars dedicated to the Ukrainian higher education in times of war. These series of four webinars are convened by Dr. Yulia Zaychuk and myself. Yulia is here in the audience. Yulia is from Ivan Franco National University of Lviv in Ukraine. She is currently an academic visitor at the Department of Education at Oxford. My name is Maya Chanceliani. I'm Associate Professor of Comparative and International Education here at Oxford. As the Russian military offensive in Ukraine continues, this series of talks looks into the ways in which Ukrainian universities and research institutes are coping under these challenging conditions. The series explores the efforts of these universities to sustain educational and research activities, while at the same time prioritizing the security of everyone involved. Our speakers drawn from Ukrainian higher education and research institutions share their first-hand accounts of functioning amidst the turmoil of war. Before introducing our current today's speaker, let me attend to a few administrative points. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted online in due course. Please keep yourself muted throughout the entire webinar, uh, unless I have invited you to speak. To ask your question or to share your comment, please use the chat function and write out the question or a comment you wish to ask. At least put a note that you have a question or comment to ask that will help me to invite um, different participants to speak. Uh, when I invite you to speak, please unmute yourself, switch on your video and state your name and where you are from before sharing your comment or question. Let me introduce Professor Olena Lokshina. Professor Lokshina is the head of Department of Comparative Education at the Institute of Pedagogy at the National Academy of Educational Sciences of Ukraine. She's also a professor at Boris Grinchenko Kiev University. Her research interests focus on developmental trends and innovations in education in Ukraine and abroad, she has special interests in educational reforms, curricula, competences, education quality at all levels, schools, vocational and technical education, and higher education. She identifies herself as comparative education researcher and teaches doctoral level courses on comparative and international education. Professor Lokshina has authored numerous publications, including monographs, analytical studies, textbooks, and journal articles. Her today's talk is titled Higher Education in Ukraine at a Time of War, Losses and Achievements. Thank you for joining us, Professor Lokshina. The floor is yours. Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon, dear colleagues, dear participants. I'm delighted to take part in this series of uh, talks on Ukrainian higher education in times of war, organized by the Global Public Seminars in Comparative and International Education, University of Oxford. In the context of general topic of uh, the Ukrainian higher education in times of war, I would like to draw your attention today to the challenges faced by doctoral training uh, based on my personal experience and some results of the empirical research. Let me just uh, presentation. Is it okay with my presentation? Everybody? Yes, it's great. We see it very well. Um, um, uh, it is very difficult to talk about Ukraine in uh, the context of war, uh, honestly, really difficult. Every day brings, like today, brings a new 
deaths, uh, destruction, damages, wounded, etc. Uh, and um, I think uh, and Ukraine doesn't deserve uh, this all. Ukraine, this is a big uh, modern European state. It is the second the largest European country. Uh, after gaining independence, uh, after gaining independence, in 1991, Ukraine launched reforms aimed at building democratic state, a democratic country of the European model. And the reforms in education and higher education in particular are aimed at integrating education into the European higher education area, the European education area, and the European research areas. Um, as far as the uh, higher education in Ukraine, at the beginning of 2023, there were 332 higher education institutions, many, many higher education institutions. Uh, about 60% were state honored, 7.5% uh, municipal. By the way, I work in the municipal university, Kiev Boris Grinchenka University and 35% private universities. Total number of uh, higher education students was uh, 1,113,000 1, people. And 33,000, this is 3%, uh, studied at postgraduate uh, level. In order to adapt uh, the educational process to the challenges of the war, various training models were introduced. Uh, as of July 2023, 10% uh, of higher education institutions have fully switched to the full-time education. Uh, about 50% continue to work remotely. 35% shows mixed format and 1.3% uh, did not resume their activities because of the war. Um, according to the National Qualifications Framework, uh, qualifications for higher education include junior bachelor level, bachelor level, master degree level, and the Doctor of Philosophy, Doctor of Arts, and Doctor of uh, Science. This is a level, uh, level A. Um, a postgraduate study in Ukraine is the, as in most unit European countries, lasts four years. Uh, and the com com completion of the program and thesis defense, PhD title is awarded. The second academic degree, Doctor of Science, is awarded after Doctor of Science thesis defense. The PhD degree is a prerequisite for obtaining Doctor of Science degree. And this degree, Doctor of Science degree, is similar to the Doctor of Habilitation degree, which exists in some uh, countries. The Doctor of Philosophy and Doctor of Science are also um, trained at the basic scientific institutions, including academies of sciences. In Ukraine, there is a big, as we, as we uh, call it, a big um, National Academy of Sciences, which was established more than 100 years ago. Uh, the academy, the big academy, conducts research in the physical, technical, mathematical sciences, chemical, biological sciences, social sciences, and humanities. For today, uh, there is about uh, 100 research institutes and other scientific institutions, including botanical gardens, libraries, etc. Uh, besides, also there are five sectoral academies in Ukraine. You can see on the slide the names of these academies. 
all of them are national. And uh, you can see that there is National Academy of Educational Sciences of Ukraine, where I work. It consists of about uh, 10 institutes, research institutes. I work at the Institute of Pedagogy of the National Academy of Educational Sciences of Ukraine. We also have Institute of Problems of Upbringing, Institute of Digitalization, um, Institute of Vocational Education and Training, etc. Et um, unfortunately, the peaceful life of, of Ukraine, educational reforms, educational developments were interrupted by the war. Um, February 24, uh, 2024, this year, 24 February, will mark two years since the beginning of Russia's full-scale armed aggression against Ukraine. And in general, the armed aggression began in March 2014 in the Ukrainian East, in Donbass. That is, it, it will be 10 years in March this year since the shelling, occupation, killings, and destruction on Ukrainian soil, Ukrainian territory by Russian Federation. Uh, you can see awful data on this slide and awful photos. Um, about the number of killed civilians, the number of um, uh, injured civilians. These are data of the United Nations High Commission for Human Rights and Office of the Prosecutor General of General of Ukraine. As far as uh, um, education system of Ukraine and higher education system of Ukraine, it also has suffered and continues to suffer large-scale destruction. According to the data of the Minister of Education and Science of Ukraine, it beginning with the uh, large-scale invasion, uh, February 24, 2022, Five high education institutions were completely destroyed, and the 80, about 88 institutions in different regions of Ukraine um, uh, were, uh, uh, were damaged. The greatest destruction and damage was sustained uh, in the uh, regions clo closer to, to the uh, war operation, in the over war operation areas. Um, uh, another big challenge, this is the relocation of uh, higher education institutions. Uh, um, according, again, according to the Minister of Education and Science data, as of July 2023, 29 state-owned higher education institutions were relocated from the areas of active facilities and from the frontline areas. Uh, this number includes the first wave of relocation started in mid-2014. The majority of uh, the displayed institutions of higher education have been placed in partner universities and or other educational institutions. Uh, you, you see the picture on the slide. I want to give you an example of Lugansk Taras Chevchenka National University. This is a very big university. It was founded more than 20, uh, 100 years ago. It was relocated twice. Uh, the first uh, relocation that took place in, in 2015 after the start of the war in Donbass, and the second relocation that took place in 2022 after the beginning of the large uh, scale invasion or war. A university was relocated to another uh, region, Oblast to Ukraine, to Poltava city. 
And uh, in addition to the loss of material and technical facilities, of course, during relocation, university also losing human capital. I would like to mention a Professor Yevgen Hryko, whom I knew and actively communicated with him. Uh, he was very, very qualified scholar and a professor. I communicated with him during the meetings, uh, the conferences, uh, meetings of, of the academic council. So we discussed with him methodology of scientific research and the methodology of the imperative education research in particular. He presented to me his uh, last, as it appeared, his last uh, monograph. Um, on the probe dedicated to the methodology of education research by PhD uh, students. And unfortunately, in spring 2022, Professor Hrykov was uh, shot dead by Russian soldiers uh, in the country yard of the apartment block where he lived. Uh, the automatic fire was the Russian invaders' responses to the Ukrainian professor request not to harm people, mostly pensioners and women with young children who were fleeing the shelling in the basement of a nearby uh, houses. Um, uh, another challenge, uh, this is uh, fleeing uh, of the Ukrainian uh, students and uh, teachers. The war um, resulted in more than uh, 6 million Ukrainians fleeing to neighboring countries. This includes uh, about 16% of total number of enrolled students. This is not only higher education students, but all students in the education system. And over 6% of total educators in the country. Many university professors, you can see the photo on this slide, uh, have gone to the front and are fighting the Russian invaders. And in the photo, you can see professor from Ushgorod, University conducting classes and lectures with his students from a trench at the front. This is a very well known photo in Ukraine. About 80,000 higher education students are internally displaced, persons within Ukraine, and there is an overflow of Ukrainian students to study at universities in other countries. Uh, in green, you, you can see numbers of um, students, higher education students studying in uh, Poland. Another challenge is the ecological impact of the war. Uh, according to an online survey of students, faculty and staff of Ukrainian higher education institutions who remained in Ukraine, about 100% of respondents reported a deterioration of their psycho-emotional state uh, with complaints, uh, complaints of depression, loneliness, and, and anger, etc. Students abroad all also have a psychological problems as well. War also challenges um, the area of research and innovation also um, face, faces war challenges. Um, these are the data of the European Commission. Uh, about 35% of the research infrastructure has been damaged, including unique scientific equipment and facilities research laboratories and centers for the collective use of scientific equipment uh, by March 2023. 25% uh, of scientific workforce had left the country, including more than 5% uh, of young, young scholars who worked in higher education institutions. 
And for academies of sciences, recipiation is critical. 43% of young uh, scholars, young scientists, have changed their place of residence and left Ukraine for other uh, countries. Public investment uh, in science and innovation has been cut to a minimum as well. Everything, uh, all funds go, go to, um, to, to, to the front to support, to support uh, the fighting uh, against enemies. As I involved uh, in the doctoral training at the National Academy of Educational Sciences of Ukraine and Boris Grinchenka Kiev Metropolitan, Metropolitan University. I, I uh, teach the course on comparative and international education uh, for PhD students in uh, those institutions. I conducted a survey of my PhD students about challenges of living in war time. Uh, you can see on the slides, uh, slide that air raid alarms uh, were, uh, was named as the biggest challenge. Then comes inability to sleep properly at night due to the air raid alarms, need to go to the shelter, etc., etc. And believe me, it is really awful when you hear the noise of the rocket flying on your roof. It is, it is, it is awful to hear such a noise. And uh, I absolutely agree with uh, my PhD students. Uh, as far as transformation within their scientific research practice or model is concerned, the PhD students name the refusal to participate in conferences organized, co-organized by the Russian Federation or in which scholars, scientists from Russian Federation participate. Uh, then comes uh, Refusal to use sources, uh, scientific sources in Russian language or published in Russia, in Russian Federation. And then comes complication of academic mobility for women, complicated logistics for men, such, uh, complicated procedure for travel and abroad. So, uh, War means the destruction, death, horrors for millions of people, economic decline, then suspension of successful development in Russian education. Russia's war against Ukraine forced higher education institutions of Ukraine to face numerous challenges. I absolutely agree with the formulation of the challenges made by Dr. Yulia Zayachuk in her presentation. Uh, two uh, weeks earlier here. Uh, these are such challenges as to survive for um, higher education and for education system in Ukraine, to continue to qualify uh, the quality education services providing, to preserve scientific potential. And uh, I would like to add um, um, Another challenge, uh, this is uh, to develop under new condition, and this is European integration. On the next slide, I present, uh, outline the, the steps of this integration for Ukraine, starting from uh, signing adoption of the association agreement between European Union and uh, Ukraine, it was the result I, uh, of, uh, of Euromaidan events in 2014. Then another document, communication uh, from the Commission, uh, 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 commission opinion on Ukraine's application for membership uh, of uh, the European Union. 
Commission start work in paper, European Council conclusions on Ukraine uh, in December, and the December 14, 2023, European Council decision announces the start of the negotiations on Ukraine's accession for the European Union. And analyzing, analyzing the results of the report, the data of the report, in the document presented in the document uh, Ukraine 2023, accompanying the document communication from the Commission to the European Parliament Council, European Economic Social Committee, and the Committee of Regions, communication on EU enlargement policy regarding Ukraine, it is stated that Ukraine has some level of preparation in the area of education. On higher education, Ukraine is a member of the Bologna process. Ukraine joined Bologna's process in 2005 and has ratified the Lisbon Convention, Recognition Convention. It has made progress on the key European education area commitments, effectively engaging in the EU higher education policy and transnational cooperation. At the same, at the same time, uh, there are challenges regarding the network of uh, higher education institutions, and the organization of digital learning, etc. And then in the area of science and research, Ukraine is moderately prepared. Uh, in, it participates in a Euro European Union research and innovation programs and seeks greater integration into the European research area and new European innovation agenda. Overall limited progress was made. In particular, Ukraine is revising roadmap for integration into the European research area has made making progress on some of its priorities, etc. However, Ukraine's participation in European research area is still limited. Um, this conclusion is fully supported by a survey that our project team conducted within the project funded by the Euro Ukrainian Education Research Association with the support of the European Education Research Association. My colleagues and I are members of the Ukrainian Education Research Association. The project lasted one year in 2023 at the Institute of Pedagogy of the National Academy of Education Sciences of Ukraine. The title of the project uh, European Research Area as a Guideline for the Development of Educational Science in Ukraine. As you can see from this slide, 820 respondents from the all regions of Ukraine took part in this survey. These are representatives of education from all level institutions, secondary, vocational, higher institutions, research institutions, and of all ages. And unfortunately, only 32, about 33% of uh, the respondents provided information on the history, formation uh, of the European research area, formation and development of the European research area, its aims and characteristics. Um, in particular, uh, among the most relevant goals of the European research area for Ukraine, respondents named supporting open science and better knowledge sharing, improving the efficiency of national research systems, promoting research and ability, and career development opportunities, more investment as usual investment. In fact, as you can see from this slide, 
And these are those that are directly, directly relevant to, to the Euro, Ukrainian researchers and the Ukrainian science area. Uh, among the challenges faced by the Ukrainian res uh, research area and the Ukrainian researchers, the respondents included issues related to Russia's war against Ukraine uh, and lack of, of adequate funding. And that is, that is true. Uh, the vision, this vision fully coincides with the vision of my PhD, PhD students that they expressed in the survey. In addition, uh, the students, the PhD students, also identified such uh, serious challenges as a low share of young researchers, uh, gender inequality, and academic non-integrity. And uh, believe me, these are real challenges as well. Um, when asked uh, what do you need to improve the efficiency of your doctoral research? Uh, the PhD students answered um, inclusion of uh, courses, inclusion of courses on psychological support, and it is very important uh, during the year, inclusion of European integration issues. Yes, uh, I understand. Everybody supports integration, integration, European integration of Ukraine, and European integration of the Ukrainian education and higher education and doctoral education. But still, we need uh, more information and we need special skills how to integrate. And increasing hours of consultation with the supervisor. I understand it that um, um, great transformations are taking place in the model of doctoral training and students need support during such transformations. Okay, and uh, in summary, in summary, I would like to say that I totally agree with Dr. Zayachuk and Professor Gladyshevsky vision that higher education is facing enormous challenges every day in the context of war. These are daily threats to the life and health, complete or partial destruction of higher education institutions, lack of shelters, uh, it seems to me, according to the Minister of Education and Science data, about only uh, there are 70 percent of all needed shelters now in Ukraine. Post internal and external uh, displacement, decreasing number of young people with disabilities due to injuries during uh, at war the front. Um, uh, reduction of state budget expenditure, constant stress, etc., etc., etc. And um, as far as doctoral training is concerned, you can see on the slide just uh, the, the same challenges, destruction, uh, loss of um, um, number of postgraduate students and teachers, reduced funding and total. Right. And um, obviously, in these conditions, uh, uh, fundamental changes are taking place in the system of doctoral training. According to my research, I see it in such a way. Uh, there is rethinking of the relevance of research. Postgraduate students choose research topics related to the war and reconstruction, adjustments are made to research that are already underway. For example, this morning at the department meeting at Boris Grinchenka University, where I work, the dissertation topic of my PhD student was changed. The topic of teacher training um, was replaced with the topic of overcoming 
educational losses and learning losses at the level of general secondary education in the context of work. My PhD student, she asked me for the changing of her research topic because she, she told me, I want that my research um, help our education, help our country to, to fight uh, in the war and uh, to, to help in the reconstruction. Another transformation is the, is the distancing from Russian science at the level of refusing to use study, uh, to use works of Russian scholars uh, and the contacts with Russian scholars. And the, another process, a very uh, powerful process, this is integration of Ukrainian science and education and doctoral education into the European research area. And the such, I can, uh, Mm, uh, I see such challenges as a low level of awareness of the history of integration, the characteristics of the European, uh, um, European education area. And uh, there is also urgent need to further develop in Ukraine research skills and academic culture inherent in the European research area. And finally, working in the area of comparative education, I, I would also like to talk about the importance of comparative education in Ukraine during the war and the expansion, and the, and the expansion of its task. So comparative and international education has to respond quickly to new demands of society and education. And this is confirmed by my, our experience, uh, experience of the Department of Comparative Education uh, of the Institute of Pedagogy, which I had, uh, for instance, in addition to our planned work, our team um, in crisis situation uh, prepared an analytical review, published analytical review of international experience and recommendations for organizing education in, during pandemic, pandemic COVID 2022. You can see just on this slide. In 2022, after the outbreak of the full scale of war, we analyzed and published materials from the international organizations on organizing education in times of war. And my thoughts on the mission of the comparative education on the example of the Department of Comparative Education were published in an article in the English language journal of the National Academy of Educational Sciences of Ukraine, Education Modern District Sys. The link to the website of the journal is on the slide. So today, comparative and international education in Ukraine is tasked not only with researching the directions of the reforms, uh, trends, uh, transformations, and successful practices, what is happening, but also with the effective mechanisms for fulfillment of these tasks uh, what, uh, that are relevant to the state, society, education, I formulated how to do it and or how to become a participant, part of this process. And uh, to my mind, the most relevant areas, topics are today effective functioning of education in times of war, minimizing and overcoming uh, learning losses, forms and mechanisms for integrating national education and science into the European education research areas, forming European research culture in Ukrainian postgraduate students. And as my research has shown, the issues of comparative and international education, especially European integration, are of particular relevance for doctoral uh, education. Thank you for your attention, and I welcome your questions and uh, comments.
Thank you so much, Professor Lokshina, for this very informative presentation. I'm glad we have around 20 minutes to engage with our participants. Uh, as the questions are coming in uh, and comments, please just drop a word or two in the chat so that I know you want to speak. Perhaps I could ask the first question. Um, I wanted um, to ask you to reflect further on the role of international collaborations, international links, partnerships in supporting Ukrainian higher education and research, including doctoral training. I know lots of your work is dedicated to doctoral training. Um, uh, what are some of the key challenges at the moment in building those international links and retaining those international links? And how can those links be further supported uh, maybe by your Western colleagues, by ourselves? What are the ways in which perhaps some of us who are outside Ukraine can help you, support you better um, to keep things going in higher education research and of course subsequently with the recovery but at the moment during the war so can you tell us a little bit more how do you imagine uh, better support and um, uh, what do you think should be happening that is still not happening thank you maya thank you very much for, for your question I'd like to express my deep, extreme gratitude to, to, to the universities, to the European countries, all countries of the world for supporting Ukraine and for supporting Ukrainian um, educators, scholars. Uh, and many, many uh, big funds uh, um, are formed uh, for support uh, um, educators and students who are in Ukraine and who are in other countries now conducting their research well uh, just preparing this presentation I found many statistics of the Ministry and Education for the size of Ukraine regarding um, regarding sums uh, uh, some uh, euros, dollars uh, of this, uh, this support. Uh, and uh, I should say that, uh, uh, to my mind, uh, the big challenge for the Ukrainian scholars, uh, uh, this is just uh, uh, how to use this uh, uh, help, how to use this support. Uh, still, there is a problem uh, with the English language for many Ukrainian scholars, especially of um, who are not very young. <laughs> so uh, this is the language barrier. Uh, another, um, I talked today about the culture, research culture uh, that are in the European many Western countries, how to conduct the research, what skills uh, should a researcher um, has. Uh, so this is another problem, uh, challenge. And I think that um, inside Ukraine, uh, the ministry or just the project supported by by uh, foreign universities, uh, they should support the development formation of such skills uh, uh, among uh, skills of the Ukrainian researchers. As another big, uh, big area of the work, this is information, information and information and information. Because uh, um, some people that they don't have full information or they have part of information. But I should say that the ministry is doing its best now with the new, new team under the, under the new minister of education. They're very, very innovative. And I believe that just uh, the challenge of war, they, we face, we need to move, we need to work, uh, because if we not move, 
and just we die. So we we, sh we will move and we will just do, do our best to, to just to cooperate. And again, thank you very much for the support. Thank you, Dr. Lokshina. Uh, can I please invite Nadia Ivanenko to ask uh, her question? Thank you, Maya. Um, hello, my name is Nadia Ivanenko. I am a visiting academic at the Department of Education, uh, University of Oxford. Well, my question is, um, what ways do you see to develop Ukrainian research and science, um, and especially the research work of young scientists, um, if the level of funding, uh, of state funding, has dropped dramatically since their full-scale invasion? As we know, the uh, state funding uh, of higher education from the beginning of the war was reduced by 10%, uh, maybe now more. Um, I read some documents. And Minister of Education and Science reduced funding of fundamental research up to 60% and applied research, scientific and technical development up to 70%. And what is more dramatically for me, all research of young scientists were reduced up to 80% from the need for 2023. So those numbers that um, I was using also for uh, my paper um, and the article. So do you see any ways out of this uh, situation? Thank you, Nadia. Thank you, Nadia, for your question for, uh, for this. Just I see a sure, sure lack of money lack of money for, for research, for education, and it is understandable during the war. I think just the participation in the uh, project programs that is on Europe. Uh, this is very big, uh, powerful uh, program and with a lot of money. As uh, today in the morning, I just I participated online in the meeting of the uh, program Horizon uh, committees of the Horizon uh, Europe, Europe. And uh, as far as I know, additional money will be allocated to support the Ukrainian science, the Ukrainian researchers as well. So the big challenge is maybe uh, um, this is just to form, to form special skills, how to write proposal, how to win a grant, and how to implement, successfully implement this grant. That is all. So our task is to form such skills and such culture. Thank you. Thank you both. I do not see at the moment further questions or comments, so I will use the opportunity to ask another question. <laughs> um, my other question that I have been thinking about uh, even before your talk relates to online learning and digital technologies and all of that. Given the emphasis on um, online tools to communicate between teachers and students in higher education, as well as within schools and vocational and technical education, in the entire education sector, obviously a lot probably is happening online at the moment. What have been, do you think, perhaps there have been even studies of this um, uh, access to technology and equity, digital equity and digital divide. Uh, what has been learned in this area, if you are aware, if there are no studies, perhaps from your own impressions, how big is this digital divide? Um, based on different regions of Ukraine, different types of institutions and different socioeconomic groups. And if there are any insights, uh, how these insights do you think can inform education policy and practice in the near future? Uh, thank you. This is just a very, very interesting uh, um, question. Uh, yes, I've met uh, such uh, research several years ago. It was conducted by the Minister of Digital Transformation of Ukraine regarding situation with the uh, internet in different regions of Ukraine, with the digital skills or competences of just inhabitants, not and not educators, not students, but all citizens of Ukraine. 
uh, the situation was uh, not very good, especially in the villages, comparing with the big cities. Uh, besides, situation was not very good with uh, devices uh, and uh, just um, speed, speedy internet, uh, especially again in the villages. But it was just before pandemic and before war. Um, I should uh, say that uh, thanks to the pandemic, thanks, uh, unfortunately, just a Ukrainian education, uh, excuse me, Ukrainian education um, managed to, to move to and use online format. And this is good because, because it the uh, digital, digital devices and digital form of a uh, training of education instruction, uh, in fact, uh, saved the, the educational process at the, after the beginning of uh, the large scale uh, war. Of course, of course, there is no yet big, uh, re big research, big, big studies um, regarding uh, the problems with the primary uh, school. Uh, teach uh, students uh, because they need just to be in school when they start in writing, reading, uh, just um, uh, well, but um, of course, uh, this is good for the Ukrainian education that um, teachers and students uh, just use um, uh, ICT uh, technologies uh, now. Well, but um, study should be continued to different aspects uh, need to be studied. Thank you very much for that. I do not see further questions and comments. Um, I would like to thank you very much, uh, um, Professor Lokshina, for joining us today for your very informative talk. Uh, we will be continuing seminars next week and finishing next Wednesday with our fourth seminar. And the speaker will be Professor Oksana Bodnar. We really look forward to your talk, Professor Bodnar, who is now in the audience. Um, I would like thank you to everyone joining today and share the link if you have not signed up for the next talk. I hope to see you next Wednesday. Uh, goodbye for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye.